years. Right, right. Unless you put it out to the mainland, and then who knows, right? Right. And in addition, you're going to find very interesting is that in these letters that these people received dated June 24th, it said, if you don't agree with our assessment that you don't meet the minimum requirements, please call this number and ask for this individual. And they called the number, and they got a recording saying the number is not in working order. Oh, and no. so I, they faxed me the letter. I called the number, and sure enough, it's a bogus number. Oh, my goodness. And they had seven days. So wow. the question to the administration is, what are you going to do about these people who were told they have seven days from the date when you gave them a wrong number and they didn't mm -hmm. know what other number to call? Wow. So there's so many red flags mm -hmm. regarding this whole um, changing of positions because the law does state that the administration, and I will read from Act 213, Section 191, mm -hmm. it says, provided that no funds, including federal funds, shall be expended to fill any position not authorized by the legislature. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this position was not authorized. We, in fact, abolished the position. They're going around the legislative intent. They're, they're trying to get this position together. And uh, at the last hearing, we asked Brian Sekiguchi if he he applied for the position and he did and I asked him do you think it's a conflict because he was part of shepherding this position mm -hmm. to be ready for recruitment right and so what's the explanation he wouldn't comment he said I won't comment on that mm -hmm. uh, the other red flag is that they're supposed to recruit advertise and recruit internally before they go externally well they did the external first mm -hmm. and then they did the internal after which is backwards and so that's another red flag. And so there are just so many red flags regarding this one position uh, that we're questioning it. Then it leads us to other questions because I have had concerns regarding the management of the deputy, mm -hmm. uh, regarding the AVI contract, Ted's wiring. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but back in 2000, the state paid $1.4 million for this uh, tracking, this, this system that tracks cars mm -hmm. that pass. To I do remember that. Do you remember that? And right. um, they have transponders on the cars, mm -hmm. and as they, as they drive past, the system can pick up the car. And so when they go to pick up people at the airport, the, the uh, state can, in fact, audit them to see if they're paying their $3, because they're supposed to pay three dollars every time they pick up somebody at the mm -hmm. airport. Well, the system was supposed to be up and running in 2003. When I held a hearing on April 9th, 2009, that system was still not up and running. Wow, and we paid for it. And we had paid them all the money. Mm -hmm. And then we found out that the company that Ted's Wiring had subcontracted went out of business, and they had no system in place that was working at the time. And as of last week's hearing, supposedly now, because we went to the bond company, the sh uh, surety, to say, hey, you haven't provided us, there was a bond, and give us our money back. Right. And of course, the administration didn't want to do that. We had to badger them into doing that. Mm -hmm. And so now they hired Ted's back again. Supposedly now the system is working, but there is um, a requirement that Ted's have to run the system for two years. And mm -hmm. the question becomes, uh, are they qualified to run the system? To who's going to run it once they're gone? What's the maintenance cost? What are we getting for our money? And now that it's, it's seven years old, is this is this uh, system outdated already? Right. And I remember there was problems with the taxi companies thinking, okay, we're coming around, and then we're trying to pick up somebody, and maybe there's not somebody to pick up, and we're coming around, and we're coming around. Right. So we have to keep paying the $3 each time, right? Well, they're not supposed to keep paying it. However, it's again, who's going to monitor the system right. now that if it's up to say that this guy, you know, had to move because right. he couldn't stay and he didn't really pick up somebody versus mm -hmm. someone who's who's trying to get around the system mm -hmm. by making trips and not paying. Exactly. Um, there's also issues that if two cars are going at the same time that the that the system cannot pick it up. Mm -hmm. And because it's a fans type system that if you've got taxis coming at the far ends that it might not pick it up. So there, there's all this issues regarding regarding um, the system, and yes, the system was inherited by this administration, but from the time the administration came in to, to last year, 2009, mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing was done. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting point is at that hearing, the deputy didn't show up to the hearing, and his assistant, Sidney Hayakawa, said that he was off on airport business out of state. Well, we found out that he, in fact, had gone to the Masters Golf Tournament, mm -hmm. and he wasn't on state business. Mm -hmm. And so last hearing, we asked him, I asked him, were you on state business? He says, no, I took leave, personal leave. But he had told his staff, who told us, that he was on state business. So I asked to see his, 
his vacation records to see whether or not, in fact, um, the state wasn't paying for him. I remember um, you asked him leave. that. So what it, did you ever get the records yet? No. We're waiting for the records, and I'm hoping that we get it today for tomorrow's hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, besides, besides the AVI contract, you have the security contract by Securitas. Mm -hmm. And that contract uh, ended three years ago. And in the contract, there were a two-year extension period of which the administration invoked. And so instead of going out to bid in 2007, they, they um, opt to extend for one year and they opt to extend another year. 2009, it ended. No more extensions allowed in the contract. Well, they extended it six months and now we're in the second six months of this contract. They haven't gone out to bid. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. The economy was ripe this past year to go out to bid because we could probably get the contracts in lower. They didn't go out to bid. The contract has escalated. It's gone from, I believe, just for Oahu, from uh, 86 million, I'm sorry, 36 million to 86 million. Oh my goodness, that's it quite a bit of a jump. It went for three years to six years uh -huh. because they kept extending and every time they extend it was a 5% or 2% increase mm -hmm. in this contract. Um, and you know, just this contract alone, we understand. I understand that. Uh, yes, we need to have this company there. We need to have the security. But they knew that the contract end was ending in mm -hmm. 2007. They had a lot of notice, mm -hmm. and they knew they could do a two-year extension. Fine. Well, they should have been working on on the contract. They should have been working on going to bid. Mm -hmm. Similarly, all of the airport parking contracts have been on month to month for mm -hmm. three to seven years. Mm -hmm. All during this period that. Um, the deputy has been running the airports. All of these contracts have not been let out. And the bus contract's on month to month, the taxis contract is on month to month. One of the employees came up on Wednesday and said, oh, you know, I, I wrote the RFP for the parking uh, in 2003, it's three quarters complete. And I said, excuse me? In 2003, he goes, yeah. I said, well, how come you didn't finish it? He goes, well, something else came up. I said, well, what was it? <laughs> he says, well, time. he says, the duty-free contract came up. I said, when did that end? He says, oh, September 2003. I said, then what happened after that? <laughs> was something else? I said, so in 2004, 5, 6, mm -hmm. 7, 8, 9, <laughs> 10. I said, to this day, you have this, this RFP written yep. three-quarters way, complete. Wow. And yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, that is so embarrassing. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know why he would volunteer that information, but I'm glad he did because mm -hmm. it shows that the management of the airport mm -hmm. is in shambles. Mm -hmm. um, there's a real problem there. Don't you think this has been going on for like generations? Yes. I mean, I remember ever since I was a kid that airport's been under construction. <laughs> You know, it's been a perpetual construction. And the sign, airport signs, and I mean, all these things, the taxi contracts, and on and on and on. So I'm glad you're digging into it. Th um, it's one yeah. other area that's uh, associated with this is that I guess you need to get the support of people if you want to put yourself in that position. Mm -hmm. And so we, I have received... This is the administrator position? Administrator mm -hmm. position. And so I have received letters from the Air Cargo Association of Hawaii, mm -hmm. the Airport Concessionaire Committee, mm -hmm. as well as uh, met with the Airlines Committee of Hawaii. And the, the basically the letter says that they're concerned about the modernization and with the change of administration, they want to make sure that there's some continuity uh, because it's so important. I agree with them. But what the letter is really all about is keeping Brian Sekiguchi in his leadership role. Mm. And so it seems like this is an orchestrated um, effort to mm -hmm. put him into a civil service position, which I have issues with these organizations trying to get involved with civil service law and who should be placed, because this is not an appointed position. Mm -hmm. It is a civil service position that has to be uh, recruited for and equal opportunity, and it has to be unbiased and so forth. And by these letters, and you can tell it's orchestrated because in the letters they both have same some same language in it, uh, including this one that says, by copy of these letters to legislators listed below, we respectfully submit this letter for their support in encouraging Brian Sekiguchi to remain in his position for a more brighter future. Well, both letters have that almost mm -hmm. that exact verbatim. I mean, so you, you yeah. know that they didn't write this on their own. It's mm -hmm. dated one day apart from each other. And interesting enough, after my hearing on Wednesday, I received phone calls from board members from these organizations who mm -hmm. said, we don't remember agreeing to that letter. Mm -hmm. We never discussed that letter in meetings. Mm -hmm. And 